Hey guys, it's, um, what is today? Today is Thursday. We had a much cooler today. We actually had some mist and drizzle this morning, but it turned out to be a nice, windy, cool day. Oh, and I have a, let's see if you can see him here, a new tenant in the garden. There he is. Um, every time I move his web, he just comes right back, so I'm gonna leave him alone for a while. Anyway, we're going to work today on project number 36 out of the thousand is our lemon trees. I got a couple lemon trees today. Um, I just realized that I've got semi-dwarf when I was looking for dwarf and that can explain the price difference. These were $36 and they can get six to eight feet, which is more than I wanted, but Oh well, more lemons. So I'll just have to spread them out a little bit further apart than I planned to. And um, hope the root pots hold up. So I saw a video that Mr. Rob Bob, our friendly Aussie gardener, did on doing a wicking tray for the net pots. So I got all the parts. There's my sand. Um, I, I, I figured looking at the different sands, the, the step two paver sand I got at Lowe's is the coarsest I can find between regular sand and this. This looked better. The problem I was having is Mr. Rob used a bottom of a barrel cut out at seven inches and either his barrels in Australia are bigger than ours or his net pot or his root pot was smaller. The root pots I have yeah, they're in there. You can't see. Oh, there's one. The cat's going inside it right there. Mine are 21 inches at the bottom across. So the barrels at the bottom, I went to the barrel store today. They are 23 inches. So doing higher math, that leaves me one inch on either side of the root pot. Or if I squish it to one side, I'd have maybe about two inches. And that would work, but at the moment I said it wouldn't work, so I left, went to a couple other places. I finally ended up at Lowe's. Now that I look at this, I'm wondering, uh, my tape measure's not here. It's supposed to be 26 inches across. I'm hoping that's inside dimension. Um, let's grab the net pot real quick and see. Because that's going to make me upset. I don't know where my uh, tape measure is. Oh, both cats were in there. Let's see. Take our nifty. I got cat hair all over it. And it looks like it's going to fit right in there. I bet you the 26 is outside dimension. But I'm going to make this work. One way or the other. I mean, it's going to be up a little higher. So what the idea is, if you don't know what a wicking bed is, if you go to my, my hydroponic channel, I did a lot of wicking beds back then, growing corn stuff. But what you do is you're going to take, I have a piece of corrugated pipe, and I'm going to have to get a lot more. But this has the slots in it, and I got a sock to keep the sand out. And what you're going to do is take that, and you're going to curl it inside with the sock on it. And then you're going to fill it with sand on top of it in all the spaces and the sand will come up to a certain point um, that's a four inch pipe so it'll come up four inches and I'll put sand up right up above all that and then you put a pipe down into it to fill it and I'm gonna do something a little bit different I'm gonna have a pipe that comes up to fill it manually and then I'm gonna have a T right here that comes out so I'm gonna eventually be doing an auto top off system for the wicking uh, trays so that way um, I won't have to fill them up all the time especially in the summer so yeah, I'm gonna have to measure this and see it but either way this is perfect I don't have to cut the barrels uh, I don't have to seal the top of the barrel um, a barrel here used food grade is $25 and like I said I would have had to make two cuts to cut the top off and the bottom off I would have had to put silicone stuff to seal up the holes on the spouts or whatever you want to call it on the top part of the barrel. This is the perfect size. I won't have to do any work to it. 
thing in, it will work perfectly. So that is the plan here. And hopefully I'll be able to set up a tripod to see you guys so you can see me working. That I'm gonna put I got the two in for the two trees. Gonna space one, two up there. And I don't know about the other trees over here. Uh all the other trees I found, the mandarin and oranges, they're all semi-dwarf. They get up to 10 feet, and I don't want that big of a tree, and I don't think they'll grow well in the containers. I'm hoping this one, now that I know it's a semi-dwarf, will do well in the containers. And maybe in the container we'll keep the size down because I don't need a eight foot tree. I just need a real bushy, a lot of fruit producing tree. So let me get busy on that. Before I get to that, I just discovered I also want to get, I'm gonna real quick put twine across here and then drop a couple lines to pick this guy up here. He fell over falling and can't get up I'm gonna try to twist them a little bit and get the branches going up there up the line and up on the netting and then I'll start working on my trees all right I'll see you guys next clip and we're back I'm in my uh, sitting resting catching my breath pose I tell you I lose my breath quite easily well what I did is I dug two holes not exact holes but they're level with each other and they're pretty much level and it might be a little crooked i had to adjust it but the majority of this is going to be filled up with the red mulch anyway so put the sock on the corrugated pipe with the slots in it curled it up like a snake Whoop. Pushed it down. I'll push it down more when I get the sand going. And what I did, instead of cutting a hole in it, I just put a pipe with an elbow kind of facing into the pipe like that. And like I said, I was going to have a T on it. So there's a T. And I might go over a little bit like this because the side is curved. If I go like this, it's too far in. I can raise it up a little bit, but that's going to make the water level too high. I might cut this pipe a little bit before I fill with sand to bring it down because I kind of wanted it even but I'm going to have to go like that regardless and that's okay because then I'll have the spout kind of setting off away from the bucket here because I did measure I did measure across and if I measured in the store I probably would not have gotten these because it's 23 inches across so the net uh, the root pot is going to be pushed that that way a little bit to make room for this here no big deal because I'm gonna fill it with sand until it gets to the top or it just gets right here and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the pot in there and plant the tree and then I'll go ahead and fill the rest up with sand around the edge of the pot so it has more wicking space and like I said this is so I can attach a tube it kind of serves two two folds. If I'm going to manually do it, it might start leaking out here, telling me I have too much water. Well, that's enough water, and that's all fine and dandy. Or later on, I attach a tube with a T here, so it can go to my brain bucket and then barrel, and then it can go on to the next pot. I wanted it kind of off to the side here, so I wasn't kind of trying to work behind the wall there. So I got to go take my daughter up to... Uh, for practice catch my breath before that so I don't know how much more I'm gonna get done tonight because after I take it to practice I might just come home and play some fallout and do some indoor work so I'll catch you guys in the next clip when I get the sand in and uh, then when I get the pot put on see ya I'll give you a quick sun the sun's pretty high so I'm not gonna shine it in your eyes but that's summer or spring it's Almost 6 o'clock and the sun's still pretty high up in the sky. So see you guys later. Yeah, once I start I basically can't stop. So I got the sand in there. And depending on how this root pot fits in there, I'm going to leave it like that. Or I might add a little bit more. If it fits tight and I'm not going to be able to get sand on the edges, I'm going to raise up the sand a little bit more. But... Um, 
In order to do that, I want to fill the bottom a few inches of the, net, the root pot. I want to call it net pot. Net pots are over there. So in here, I'm mixing. I'm mixing half a bag of uh, the citrus planting mix and half a bag of the organic compost. And then I put in half a cup of this is a citrus um, fertilizer. So you mix in half, half a cup there, and I might put a little bit more in there. And I'm just mixing it up. Well, I should have got some perlite, but yeah, I don't think I need it. This should be good. So I'm going to get this all mixed up, and then I'm going to get a cup and start scooping it in there because I don't have a little shovel. Me, the gardener, the farmer, and I don't have a little shovel. I'll have to rectify that tomorrow. Um, yeah, I had just enough of the corrugated to... I think I already showed you. Yeah, just enough to fit there, so I'll have to get another piece for that tomorrow and another sock because the sock was just enough for that piece. And this is a piece I had left over from a wicking bed I did several years ago. So I probably threw the rest away, which is a bummer now. But hindsight. So let me get back to mixing this and we'll come back in a little bit. All right, it really is almost sunset now. So, but I wanted to show you guys the somewhat finished product. I'm gonna have to go in there after it settles and fill in more sand. As you can see, I pushed it in quite a bit down here. I filled up, I mean, I sit there for 15, 20 minutes with the water, not a full blast, but, you know, filling up and it, it can hold a lot of water. So I'll fill up more tomorrow. I did a good top water, I'm gonna let it settle. For a day or two add some more mixture in there make sure I'm not stepping this pipe behind me and then um, I'll top it off a bit and then I'll add mulch on the top um, not this kind of mulch a good uh, straw de uh, decomposing type of mulch for the top and I'll throw in a bunch of red wigglers too from the worm uh, composter so and I put this little thing on the top just to make it a little easier to direct the water in the pipe it's a three-quarter inch to, uh, I don't know what it is, two inch or something. I'll look, see if there's something better to do that with, if not. And then I put a plug here while I was filling it, so half the water wouldn't be coming out that little nozzle. So it'll be like this until I get ready to connect all the uh, trees together. Um, this said, it, you know, four to eight feet, so I'm hoping that's you know kind of right around here and same thing for this one when they do the spacing they're thinking about you're putting them in the ground and they want the spacing for the roots so they're not competing for nutrients they're getting their nutrients in their own pots here in the containers and like i said when i connect them all together i'll have a brain bucket uh probably sit right down here on a couple bricks so it's the same depth and everything as these if you guys don't know what a brain bucket is um, I'll show you later when I do it, but it has a float valve in there connected to a barrel which will be hold all the water and I'll be putting some nutrients in there as well, fertilizer. And um, the brain bucket is just like a, uh, probably one of these buckets. I'll probably make a black one though so I don't have to paint it. Or it can be, you know, one of those square buckets but I don't have a lid for those so it'll probably be like one of these black buckets here with the lid on it. And the float valve sets the water level and then the uh, your outlet is at the same level depth wise as all your your uh, wicking trays so it'll be set so seven inches so that's about seven inches up it will be set seven inches up there so the water always stays the same level all the way across and when it needs more water, the float valve opens up and takes more water out of the barrel. So that's what I did last, or er, 10 years ago, five years ago. I had a bunch of them along that fence along there, controlled by a barrel and brain bucket. And it worked out pretty well. So that's it for today. There's our first lemon tree. Looking forward to the next one. And looking forward to lots of lemons over the next few years. And 
if I can't find any more dwarf plants, I'll just put another lemon tree or maybe just put one, get a big root bucket. I don't know what I'll do for the uh, wicking tray and put a full-size tree in over there. So that's it for this clip, this video on, what are we calling this? Wicking trays, root pot, container, dwarf trees. There we go. So as always, guys, be happy, happy gardening, and have a good week.